Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm in Union Square on the western edge of the square. We did a video on the park uh, earlier, so check that out. But today we're going to focus just on the school building, the Stuart Hill Academic Academy, or rather the former Stuart Hill Academic Academy. The school system closed the school earlier this year. A number of families protested against that closure and now a number of families and neighbors are trying to work with the school system to make sure whatever new use goes in will be an asset to the neighborhood just like the school was. We thought we would join that conversation in our history way by talking about uh, the building. Let's jump in with the name Stuart Hill. Stuart spelled S-T-E-U-A-R-T, -E kind of unusual. Where did that come from? Well it comes from a, a man named George Hume Stuart. Uh, Stuart was a general, I think he commanded Maryland's militia during the Mexican-American War, and he built a wonderful summer house hill here, uh, near here, uh, on a hill. He called it uh, Maryland Hall. Everybody else called it Stuart Hill, and that name stuck. The building was raised in the 1880s. It's where Bon Secours is now, but the name uh, for this part of the city stuck at Stuart Hill. As an aside, by the time the Civil War came around, Stuart was too old to fight, but he was a very outspoken pro-Confederate uh, a spokesperson. His son was not too old to fight. He had gone to West Point, uh, but when the war broke out, he left the uh, Union Army and went and joined up with Robert E. Lee, and in fact was present at uh, Lee's surrender at Appomattox. Now, I couldn't figure out when this school was dedicated in the 1960s, and we'll get to the school, whether it was for the Stewart family members or just in general because this is what the, the name of this part of the city was called, but regardless, that's where Stewart comes from. Um, all right, that's the name. What about the building? Well, the building sits on a site where another historic house uh, was demolished. This one was called Willow Brook, and it was the summer home of Baltimore's second mayor, Thoroughgood Smith. He built it in 1799, and it was fantastic. In fact, its oval salon was probably the best example of its type anywhere in the country. Um, Smith only had the house for a couple years. In the early 1800s, America was kind of at a quasi-war with France, and uh, the French were seizing American ships, including Smith's, and he basically had to declare bankruptcy. In 1803, he sold the uh, house and the property to a gentleman named John Donnell. Now, in the, 19, in the 1840s, the Donnell family gave over a couple acres uh, of what would then become Union Square Park. And then in the 1860s, uh, they uh, gave the house over to the Sisters of Good Shepherd, uh, who used it for what they called Wayward Girls, a home for Wayward Girls. And it lasted up until the 1960s when it was demolished, everything except for that oval salon, which was carefully deconstructed and then reconstructed in the Baltimore Museum of Art. I don't think it's on display any longer, but somewhere at the BMA is the Oval Salon from Willowbrook that was on this site. So now this is 1967 and the city has uh, this property and decides to build a school on it and they decide they want to build it in the most modern of ways um, and they turn to two of Baltimore's most noted modernist architects, architects a firm called Tatum and Kelly. Uh, Kelly was William Bo Kelly who I had the great pleasure uh, to get to know uh, later in his life and this is when the story gets interesting. Uh, Bo Kelly among other things founded Baltimore Heritage in 1960. He helped found the city's Preservation Commission in 1965, serving as its first chair. He founded the Baltimore County Historical Trust, now the Preservation Alliance of Baltimore County. And when the Building Museum in Washington, D.C. Uh, got going, he was the first executive director. He was one of the greatest historic preservationists of his day and of any day in Baltimore. And here he was in 1967, designing a very modern building on on the site of a former uh, wonderful historic house that had been demolished. History is interesting. Um, but Tatum and Kelly took their jobs seriously. They spent two years studying this new philosophy that was sweeping through uh, the United States uh, that we would call school without walls. Uh, back then it was called the open education philosophy. 
let's take a tiny detour into that. Uh, the tenets of it were that uh, the uh, school administrators in the 1960s felt that the rigidity of the system was causing students to fall behind. And so out went lectures, out went uh, formal curricula, out went even walls in schools. The idea was to create flexible spaces where kids could learn at their own pace and teachers could collaborate. It was well intentioned, but the movement did not last very long, as far as I can tell, mostly because it was noisy without walls. The dozens and dozens of kids in a single room uh, were just created a cacophony that uh, nobody could learn in. Uh, but in 1967, here in Baltimore, we were on the leading edge. And this is what uh, Tatum and Kelly, the architects, said that about their school that they were building. And I'll quote, they said, walls and doors were eliminated to stimulate less rigid patterns of teaching and learning to provide for ease of teachers working and planning together in an ungraded atmosphere and to best utilize the pool uh, and pool the talents of teachers. Wildly lofty for sure. Um, in addition to the indoor space, which did not have hallways and classrooms, it had a couple large flexible spaces, um, they designed the outside space also uh, to fit this philosophy. They created an amphitheater behind the school to serve as an outdoor classroom, and even the playground back there uh, was meant to be flexible in what it could be used for. The building itself, uh, you, you'll see it's uh, situated to run along the western edge of the park, uh, kind of mimicking the row houses that run along the edges, the other edges of the park, uh, but the architects, I think thoughtfully, uh, sort of did a variated roof line to break up the a monolithic look of what this big new school building would uh, look like. And uh, in, in many respects, they were successful. The site at only a little over two acres was much smaller than the 10 acres that new schools typically got, but they still managed to build a building that uh, housed 850 students. Uh, the building over the years got a number of changes, I think including walls. Um, and operated as a school just until earlier this year. And I'm going to wrap up and uh, invite you to come on down. This is not the most historic looking building on the square. Go around the corner to H.L. Macon's house for that. Uh, but take a look at it, maybe with an appreciation uh, for what the architects were trying to do and what they, in fact, were able to realize uh, with this school building that lasted so long. And I'll conclude by saying uh, that we hope that the neighbors and school system are successful in working together to find a new use that uh, keeps this uh, space uh, and makes it, makes it an asset again for the neighborhood. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.